much. Uh, just to get a check that I'm sharing the right screen, can you read on the screen appointment scheduler using Node, Firebase, yes. and the Vonage APIs? Yes, okay. we do. It's just because I have three screens, so I'm making sure I'm sharing the right thing. Very good. Let me just reorganize a few stuff here because my screen got a bit funny when I clicked to uh, share my screen. Let me get the chat open so I can keep talking to you. <laughs> to us, chat. Uh, chat, chat. Okay, I have the chat back. Okay, amazing. And since all of you are here, I have some links that I had shared in the chat that I'm going to share again, but don't worry, I'll go through them. Uh, do you prefer that I speak English or que eu fale português nesta apresentação? Let us know in the chat because since I am from Brazil and I can speak, but okay, we have some people saying English in the chat. Uh, two people said English. Okay, so let's carry on with English. In English, please. Okay, everyone wants English. Even the people who have Portuguese as first language would like to practice a little. That's very good to know. But yeah, like I said, if people from uh, Brazil uh, have a question, they don't understand something in English, they wanna, they want to listen to it in Portuguese. They can interrupt you, and you can explain it in uh, in Portuguese. So feel free to do that. Say that. Say that also in Portuguese. So uh, translate. Okay. So okay. Uh, vou falar em português o que ele falou em inglês. Que se você mesmo que eu vou falar inglês, vou apresentar tudo em inglês. É você pode perguntar na língua que você quiser. Mas se preferir escrever em português, talvez é mais fácil de se exprimir. Pode ficar à vontade. So what I just said in Portuguese is what he had said in English before, that you can ask things in any language. Uh, they're saying in the chat that we also have some friends from the US. So, okay, let's include everyone. Uh, no, don't worry, Scott, we're going to speak in English here. I'm just saying that if people would like to ask their questions in Portuguese, that's absolutely fine. So let's get to the topic of our talk, to our um, workshop actually today. So, uh, just finishing setting up my screen here and feel free this is going to be very interactive so feel free to ask me questions to share your experiences to say i've done this i haven't done that i'm here really to talk to you and to you know learn from you and you know share that experience so today we're going to talk about building an appointment scheduler using node firebase and the vonage apis just so you know a little about me, my name is Amanda Cavallaro. I am part of the developer relations team at a company called Vonage that basically has communication APIs that you can use in your applications where you can use voice, you can talk uh, on WhatsApp, you can use APIs for video, voice to verify. We have several APIs and my team, I don't know if you heard of what developer relation does, but it's basically to be an intermediate for the developers to have a better understanding on how to use our APIs. So you're going to see many of us at conferences, on Stack Overflow, on GitHub, on various forums. Really, we are developers who also like to talk to people and hear your concerns, to hear your doubts, your feedback, and really have that conversation with you. Um, I'm, I don't know if I said, but I'm originally from Brazil. And right now I live in the UK. I've been living here for six years. Uh, the, the weather, everything is quite different. I don't have a favorite, so I, I love, will this presentation be recorded? Yes, this presentation will be recorded. And uh, that's, I think, enough about me. Uh, so let's get to the topic of this presentation. So I have here a video showing a bit of what, what we're going to build. For seven seconds, you can see that let me just go a little uh, slower. So you can see that we can choose our slot. We're going to add in the UI here that you can choose a date. After you click to choose the date, you can add a phone number and then you can book your appointment. And that is going to be reflected on the real time database. Every changes that you're putting there are going to be seen on the real time database, as the name says, in real time. 
And then whenever we would like to also remove an appointment from there, we're going to use a coupon code. Uh, sorry, not a coupon code. We're going to use a code that we can remove the information, the slots from there. Let's go to the next part. And I lost my screen sharing. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so after that, for you who would like to follow everything that I'm saying here, we have the code available on GitHub. Let me share the link here in the chat as well. So we have the code available on GitHub so you can follow with me or you can have access to everything. And we also have this tutorial written um, in a written form, so you can also follow along with me what I'm doing part by part. Let me also share that link here with you. Okay, now let me just, because I lost my screen sharing, let me just put my presenter view with my notes. Sorry about that. And we can carry on with our presentation. So we're going to talk about Firebase. Have you ever interacted with Firebase before? People here watching us, may you be today or another day on YouTube. So um, if you don't know, Firebase is a back-end as a service mobile and web application development platform. So yes, so people know what Firebase is. Excellent. Let me know if you have used it in real projects, real projects as in production projects and site projects. So it provides users with the hosted backend services, such as the real-time database that we're going to use today, cloud storage, authentication, crash reporting, remote configuration, hosting for static files. So it uses the uh, ser serverless approach. Don't know if you heard of that before, but it means that we're just going to have to pay for what we use. So there is no need to be stuck with a fixed bandwidth plan, regardless of how many resources we use. And of course, there are also like pay as you go plans. There are also free tier plans. So there's a lot that you can do with Firebase. Uh, we're going to get started now with setting a Firebase. Let me share a link with you here in the chat with how we're going to get started. We're going to go to the Firebase console. Here's the link for you. Okay, let me open the console here. So this is how it would lo look like for you, console.firebase.com, because I have other projects. You can see that I have many things happening here, but if you don't have anything um, and you're probably maybe not logged in, on the top right, you will have to log in and you can use a Google account or different accounts to create uh, the Firebase account. And then you would click on add project. And then in here, you can add a project name. We could give it the name, for instance, as Vonage, Firebase, or any name that you like. Uh, and in here, there is the project ID. And this is very important because once you create this, it cannot be changed anymore. So this is the only time that you can um, change the ID. And you can see that there's a difference. For instance, for instance, I'm changing the project ID here, but it doesn't change the project name. This is how it's going to be um, recognized in your console by you. And sometimes, um, let me just give a name, Vonage Firebase. So this is okay, no one has ever created this before. Um, so once this is created, sometimes you can also use uh, Firebase for hosting. And this is going to be the URL that is suggested for you to use. So if there are some like numbers or things that you wouldn't like to use, maybe that's not the best name that you would like to use. Uh, I guess enough, enough about that. We can click on continue and you can choose if you're going to use analytics. Um, you, uh, so Google Analytics or not. I will choose not to use it, but if you do use it, you can see that you have access to more resources. For instance, A-B testing, user segmentation and targeting across Firebase products, uh, cash-free users, event-based cloud, cloud function triggers, free unlimited reporting. 
but today we're going for a simpler version of the app. And this time here, uh, when you create a project with Firebase, you're actually creating a Google Cloud Platform project. So at this time, it's creating all the resources and everything you're going to need. So you can open this project that you're creating may it be from the Firebase um, console or maybe if you're using other Google Cloud Platform products, uh, you could use the, uh, the Google Cloud one or maybe you're building a, a chatbot with um, dialogue flow or other things. So once you create this project, you can use it with various Google products. Okay, so let me get back to the presentation. So this is what we've done so far. And after the project was created, we're going to select the billing type. So what you do is you click here on the gear, you click on usage and billing. And in here you have various plans that you can use. Let me know in the chat if this is the very first time you're creating a project from this console. Maybe you used Firebase uh, in a different scenario if you have seen this console before. That's taking a little while to open right now. It's just because I'm live. When no one is watching, it's super fast. <laughs> um, your, project your project hasn't used any billable Firebase services recently. Excellent de de details and settings. So I clicked here. We have someone in the chat saying first time using Firebase here, very good. So in here, we can see all the plans that Firebase has available. There is no cost and pay as you go. We are going to click to modify plan. And for this project, we're going to use pay as you go. Uh, that's including uh, usage at no cost, calculated daily after pay only what your project uses. You have the ability to extend your project with Google Cloud and include it in all plans. So basically, this is going to you pay just for what you use. But for the amount of things that we're going to do today, that's very simple. Um, I don't think there's going to be any costs included. So don't worry. And uh, even if you are um, concerned about this or anything, as soon as we finish the workshop, you can also shut down all your resources. So don't worry about payment. And for you to have um, an account, you have to have a billing account. So I have already created an account before. I created one in Portuguese and one in English here. So what happens is that this project is going to be linked to a billing account. So if you haven't created one before, you probably have um, a, an option here saying something like create uh, an account. So I'll allow some time for people to create their accounts here. And in the meantime, because I have already created a project beforehand, I'll just switch to my other project that I created for this workshop that I already put, uh, it's this one, that I already put the billing account linked to it. So this is how it would look like after you finish, you can see that there is um, a plan that is selected in there. Okay, so I'm back to the project overview. Let me know if you're stuck at any point. If you need help with anything, I'm always happy to stop, get back, and help you out. So with that, we have the project settings. We selected the project, the project ID, the Google Cloud resources that we're going to use. Actually, we haven't set up the Google Cloud resources. So we selected the, the plan. And then in project settings, uh, let me remember how we do this part here. One second, because sometimes the UI changes and I get lost. Let me just see. Maybe it's because I had already chosen. Give me one second. No, that's fine. That's all we needed. Okay. So we have our uh, plan selected, we're good to go. And now it's time for us to install Firebase. And how we are going to do that? We are going to open the terminal on the computer. So maybe you use iTerm or 
terminal or some other um, application like that. So this is what how mine looks like. And then we are going to type npm install dash g for globally, the Firebase tools globally. And then after that, we're going to type Firebase login. And for this command to work, Firebase login, this has to be installed. So let me know if you get stuck here at this point. So we do npm install dash g Firebase tools. That was going to install that. And then you do Firebase login. Because I'm already logged in, I get a message already logged in as the email. But maybe for you, it's the first time it's going to ask you to authenticate and everything. And sometimes people get this error. I've got this error the first time. So I added this as a slide as well. That sometimes like you installed it, you run, you ran the um, um, the Firebase tools inst installation, and then you get the error. Uh, Z ZSH command not found Firebase. And then there is um, this answer on Stack Overflow that tells you what to do. So basically, they tell you to export the path and also to, uh, what was the second thing that they said? To export the path or to add it to your Bash profile or sometimes just uh, running this alias. But this alias is not um, permanent. So every time you open your terminal, you have to run this alias before. But not everyone runs into this error. So I'm going to go forward. And if you have any problem, just let me know. And one thing that we're going to use now is the Firebase real-time database. It makes it possible for you to store and sync data between your users. And as the name says, real-time. So people can access the data via the web, mobile. It helps people collaborate. So whenever we update something using the real-time database, the data is stored in the cloud and it notifies all the interested devices. So let me click here. So we are on the Firebase console and we can see real time database. Okay, so for you, this is probably going to look empty. And let, let me see. So this is probably going to look empty and you have to click to create a new database. This is how it looks like with the database here. Maybe if I open a second project here with the, the project we created, we can see how it's looking for you. So you have both um, a new and the created project to have a look. So I, cl I, create, I clicked on real-time database and it gives me the option to create database. Then this is the part that you select uh, the location where your resources are going to be. And then you can choose if you're going to have this in locked or in test mode. What's the difference? That uh, in locked mode, your data is private by default. So the client can read and write access can only be granted as a specific as specified by your rules. And in test mode, anyone, your data is open for people to interact with it. And you have to update your security rules within 30 days to enable long-term client read access. So this one is not very safe. Uh, we're going to use the test mode here for this workshop today. And then we're going to set some rules. So I click to create a database and this is how it would look like. Uh, we have the URL here and we have some tabs that we're going to go through them. So what we are going to do right now is to click on the three dots and click to import a JSON. But before you import a JSON, you're going to actually need the JSON. Let me show you how it looks like. So I have a JSON here that there are um, three slots added to it. And these slots they have, I called this database, my appointments. And then I say that the person number one uh, has an appointment on this date and this time, and this is the user ID. Then I have the person number two that's set in uh, an appointment in a, in a different uh, time or maybe same date, but always different time. 
And then there is a third person. Uh, for this one, for us to get started, I just add random people with random IDs, but uh, I'll show you how we're going to generate it. This is just for us to get started and to have some um, um, something written in our database for us to get started. So I can type the code in here, but everything I'm saying here can also be found on the, let me just paste everything before, again. So we have all, all the things that I'm doing here on the written version and also on the GitHub repo. So you can always copy from there. So you save this anywhere in your machine. I saved mine on my desktop. And then we go back to the real-time database, click on the three dots and click to import JSON. Then you browse and then you click to import. And once you do it, the data is imported to here and you can see the same information. You can see my three slots here with all the dates and the user ID in there. Let me know if you're lost, if you're following along because people got silent in the chat. So if you need me to go back in any point, just let me know. So we imported the database JSON file that we created that looks like that. And after that, we're going to add the Firebase rules. Folks, are you still joining? Are you with me? Are you okay? Great to know. So the next time we're going to do is to set the Firebase real time the, uh, the Firebase real-time database rules. These rules, they determine who can access your database, how your accesses are going to be built and how your data is structured. I'm not sure if I said this before, but uh, the real-time database is a NoSQL database. So from the, let me get back to the view here so we can see. So from the rules, from the Firebase console, we click here on this tab rules and you can see uh, that you'll be taken to a screen where you can edit those rules. So we can copy and paste the rules from the workshop that I sent you the link. Let me have it open here uh, also so I can follow along with you. Uh, so this is how it should look like. And then I'm going to paste this here. It's basically uh, telling people how uh, rules playground. I can type type. Okay, I can type now. It's not allowing me to select the whole thing. So let me do one by one, one second. So it says when people can read and write in the index. Okay, so we paste all of that um, from the My Appointments collection to be indexed on the data field. And then after we're done with this, we click on Publish. Okay, so we got that for the Firebase rules. And then we're going to set up our project. So we go to our the folder on your machine that you would like to have your project. So mine, I'm choosing desktop. I choose CD as in change directory. And then we can um, use the command MK there to make a directory. And I'm going to call it appointment scheduler. And then after that, I'm going to change into that folder. And after that, we can do an NPM init. What it does is that it prompts you to add information about the project. So the package name is appointment scheduler, the version is that, the description. Uh, we're going to use the Firebase Tools and Vonage API to build an appointment scheduler. And then you can uh, add the entry point. Um, right now, we don't have any projects, any, uh, sorry, files created, but we're going to use a server.js file. Uh, we're not going to use a test command for these. I don't need to fill this, way, this in. The keywords are like which keywords have to do with this project. Uh, the author name, you can add your name here, the license. And if everything looks fine to you, this is how it should look like. 
So after we've done that, we also have to install the dependencies that we're going to use for this workshop. Uh, let me paste here for you. The ones that we're going to use are the Vonage server SDK uh, for us to be able to send the messages. So whenever the appointment is scheduled, we're going to receive an SMS message on the phone that contains the time that the appointment is scheduled. And also uh, there's going to be a code that if you need to cancel this appointment, you have to add that code to the website. We're also going to use .env. This is um, um, a dependency that we use to get the environment variables to be used in the project uh, that come from a file uh, called .env. And then once we add that to our project, let me open here, we require the .env. And then instead of me having to write my uh, my environment variables in the open, it's better for us to uh, share this project right now. For instance, I can share my project without showing you my, my keys. I, we can add the project to GitHub or another version control website without, other, without exposing your variables. We're also going to use um, UUID. Let me see if I can open a tab here for you. UUID dependency. Uh, I'm opening it here. Okay, so we're also going to use this dependency here. That basically what it does is we're going to create these codes, right? That for each appointment, a person has a different code. Uh, in the beginning, I was using the first uh, interactions that I did for, for this workshop. I was using some, um, you know, strings that give me some random numbers, but the chances of creating, generating the codes, which were very similar or maybe even the same were high. And by using these uh, dependency here, it creates like, it generates such a large um, string that the possibility for this to be like the same is very remote. So this is why I chose to use U UUID. We're also going to use Express, uh, Firebase tools such as Firebase Admin and Firebase functions for our functions that we are going to um, deploy. So this is how our setup looks like. And once you have all of this, you can run the NPM install. And you're going to have all of that in there. Are you with me? Did you manage to install everything or are you following? Did you just get clone? Because another thing that you can do if you prefer is to, um, let me open the page here. So if you are on GitHub and you got the project, you can also come here, you can click on code and then you can clone. And then from your terminal, well, let me clear everything. And then you can type git clone this and then you have a copy of the project in your machine so it's up to you if you'd like to follow from like from if you would like to have it from scratch uh, like doing it part by part or if you would like to have the whole project and just change a few things like for instance i i there was the dot env dot example file and then i just copied and pasted and i added my own um, API uh, keys in here. So really up to you how you prefer to learn. Your Each person has a different learning process. Okay, and after that, we're going to initialize Firebase. After we do it, and then someone said in the chat, Node.js version 18 now includes in crypto, crypto.random UUID options. Oh, good to know. Even more better ways of using crypto these days. Okay, so after we did this, we can do Firebase init to initialize, but since we already created this project in the dashboard, in the console, we can, so if I run this, Firebase init, um, we can say what we're going to use. For instance, we're going to use the Firebase real-time database, and we're also going to use uh, functions for this. Uh, we're not going to use any of the things. 
the other options that we have. And then, so I, I selected them with the space bar, not enter, not return. And after I selected, I, I press return. And then in this part here, what I was saying is you can use, use an existing project because you created it from the dashboard. If you hadn't created the project from the dashboard, you could also create a, a, like a new uh, Firebase project from here. So we can click to use an existing project. And this is going to give you a list of all the projects that you have with the name and the IDs. And then you can choose, uh, this is the one that we created, Vonage Firebase. And then at this point, it's going to set up everything. So you were prompted to choose if you're going to use an existing project, which of the uh, functionalities you're going to use and which were a real-time database and the Firebase function. So every time that we make changes here, we can always deploy our functions. Um, okay. And then it can ask you more questions. It's asking about the security rules that we already did from the web page. And then a functions directory will be created in your project with simple code. Uh, I have the project created here. Yep. And uh, so it's generating, it's creating all of these things. And just so you know, it's going to create a few files on your, on your project. One of them should look like this Firebase RC that contains the project and the project ID, the Firebase JSON that it says it's reading from the file uh, database.rooms.json. Mm, what else? Uh, this is going to be generated afterwards. Uh, and then it has more questions for us. Um, what language would you like to write your cloud functions? I'm writing them in JavaScript. Do you want to use the yes, Slint? You can choose. Um, do you want to use? Uh, do you want to install dependencies with npm? No, yes. And then at this point, it would install the dependencies for you. That's going also to take a little time. And we're almost finished setting up Firebase. With that, everything is there that you need. So there is going to be um, a folder called functions slash package uh, functions, index functions, get ignore. Fantastic. And now that I think about it, I'm creating a new project here, but I should also be doing this in my pre-existing file that I'm going to use here with you, but that's okay. Uh, if you're following what I'm doing here, you're able to do this as well. Okay, so we initialize Firebase, we have everything set. And now let's talk about a bit of the HTML that we're going to use. So once the whole project is finished, right now you don't have this yet. I'm going to um, write here, but you don't have this option yet. Um, I run npm start once everything is finished, everything that we do. And then it says I'm running on port 3000. I chose 3000 in my project, but you can choose a different one in yours. Um, so if I run localhost 3000, you're going to see something like this uh, that you're going to, as I showed you in the beginning, you can choose the time of the slot, a phone number to receive the messages that we're going to send. Um, you can also book, and then once you've, uh, this happened, you click to book a slot. And then if at any point, like let's say you, you booked this slot and then you want to come back to the page and you say, oh, I don't want this appointment anymore. You add the code that you received and you remove the slot, you cancel the slot. There's no appointment anymore. So this is how our HTML should look like. So let me open the page here on what we're going to, not the page, sorry. Let me open the actual HTML page, but um, I keep seeing the page. Uh, let me open the file in the code. But just before we get to that, I just wanted to show you an overview. So we start with the title appointment scheduler. We add the meta tags. Then inside of the body, we're going to have the main code. Uh, and then in there, we're going to have a, a form with the action appointment with the method post. 
And then we're also going to have another form to cancel the appointment. And then we have the actual, the things that you saw in the, in the content of the page. Uh, we have an input with a slot uh, using daytime local, slot date, minimum, and max. So in here, you can see when is the, the time, like the minimum time that people can book a slot and the maximum time. Um, and then we make this required. And we also are going to add the labels for phone number, uh, validity, and then the submit form. So let me show you how that looks like in the code here. We go to, we create, uh, for the people who are following creating it right now, we have an HTML page called index.html. And by the way, for, for us to deploy all of these things, um, the folder that I chose is going to be public. Uh, so that Express can expose that page. So I put the HTML page inside of the public folders. And just so you see a bit of the structure of the project here, we have public. I put the CSS inside of styles, and then there's the HTML. So we can see here that because I did this workshop for the first time last year, I put 2021. Now we have to update the minimum date that we would like people to book something. What month are we in right now? So maybe we're in, we're finishing May, right? No, we're entering May five. So people can only book appointments in the month. Hang on, this is day, right? Not month. Getting confused. So this is six, 10, 30, this is the month. So yes, this is five, five, and this is the day. So from one to the 30th. Um, so my store just accepts appointments from 8.30 a.m. to uh, 4.30 p.m. By the way, there is an input, you know, input tags that we have different types. There is a type that is date, time, local. So all this UI here, I didn't create anything. I didn't, I didn't import a library or anything like that. Uh, basically, just by adding this, uh, where is here? But just by adding this, uh, all of this was generated. Of course, there are more robust ways to creating this, but for this demonstration, I use this. And then in here, we can select the time. And I also put the step 300 because what it's saying is I'm not going to accept any appointments that are not exact times. So if I put that it did that it is at 945, it accepts. If I put it at 944, it doesn't accept. So you can also choose like, uh, so my uh, company, we're only going to book appointments every 15, every 30 minutes. So you can choose that. Mine is for five minutes, maybe for, I don't know, COVID tests or something different. Okay, so this is the part that we have for the HTML. And I also created this spawn class called validity that it's not checking the validation of the back end or anything like that. It's just for the CSS. Uh, yeah, and then we also have the form for the cancel appointment that has the text and this button here that once I click these two buttons, it's going to generate, uh, sorry, it's going to, um, it's going to interact with the code that we're going to create for the back end. Are you with me? Do you have any questions? And by the way, for the people following on Twitter or other places, I don't have access to the uh, questions there right now. So to the people that I'm asking if you have any questions are the ones that are following here on, on Zoom. Uh, but I'm going to share also my contact and everything so you can ask me questions afterwards and I can check the other places that this is going to be shared. Second thing, we're going to use CSS. For this demonstration web app, we, we're going to add some styling to center the contents on the page. And you, you also see that there is a red cross in case the input, the input is invalid. And there is a green tick in case it's valid. So for that, we go to the code. And we're going to create a CSS file. Let me close this, save. Uh, I created a folder style and style CSS. 
And then we added the body that's going to be centered, a div with the margin bottom 10 pixels, display fat flex, align item center. So everything is centered. Uh, for the labels, we're going to put an inline block of 300 pixels. And then I also added the inputs for invalid and valid. This is a, a very simple CSS for us to get started. So if you wanted to have a better website that you are going to have like, um, a very important appointment booker for something you can probably invest more time on CSS. But this is how uh, this page here looks like. Uh, no questions, I'm going to continue. And after that, we're going to create the .env file. As I told you before, this is the file that we add our environment variables. And the ones that we're going to use today are Firebase database URL, the Vonage API key, Vonage API secret, and the number that we're going to send the number. Shall we add them there? First of all, if you haven't used Vonage before, you probably have to create an account right now. So let's do that first, first part so we can add uh, the file, the APIs to that file. So first of all, you have to create an account with Vonage. Let me paste here. Um, so this is the page here in the chat, dashboard.nextmodel.com. Let me follow along with you. Open the browser. Okay, so dashboard.nextmo.com. Then we log in. Okay, so in there, uh, once you uh, probably you don't have access straight away, you're going to have to click to sign up. Uh, so after you create your account and everything. Uh, I'm going to speak slower now so people have actually time to create their accounts. And for the people following this workshop, we're giving away a 10, a 10 euro coupon uh, that I wrote here in the chat. And for the people following on other platforms, you can also find it written in here. I'll just stop for a moment so people can see it. Okay. So how it would look like is we go on the billing on the left, then we click on coupon. And then I copy and paste the coupon that I'm giving away for this workshop. And you can see here, I have a balance on the left. When I click submit, the balance is going to be um, 10 euros bigger. And I just realized that I put the wrong one here. So let me just up quickly update for the people who are present review, for the people who are watching from a different platform that couldn't copy and paste. So this is the code 22. S U L B Z B, and depending on the dates, if you're watching like the the recording of this, this doesn't last for a very long time. So if you're watching, I think after thirty days, I believe it's thirty days. I might be wrong. This code is not going to work anymore. Okay, so with that, now we have enough money on our account to send and receive messages and do all of our testing. And this money here has nothing to do with Firebase or the, the real-time database or anything like that. This is to send and receive SMS messages using the Vonage API. So after we've done this, we have the coupon. I'm going back to the dashboard. In here, you can see that there is, let me put this side by side. There is an API key. So I would click to copy, paste it in the Vonage API key. API secret, I copy and paste in the Vonage API secret. And uh, for this workshop, we're also going to have to, uh, to have a, a phone number that we can send uh, the message to or receive the message from depending on how we're going to use. So on the left, you can click to buy numbers and then you can choose the country because the workshop is in Brazil and maybe choose Brazil. 
Uh, and each country has a different uh, fee, let's say that you pay for that, but don't worry, you're covered here in the 10 euros for the workshop today. Then you choose if you're going to use, which features you're going to use, if they are SMS, voice, MMS. Uh, for this workshop today, we use SMS, the type mobile. Uh, I actually unticked SMS. Um, then we can find the numbers. We can see that the Brazilian number is seven euros. Um, maybe let's see a, one from the, um, I don't know, I think someone said they're from Spain here in the chat. So if I were to search a number from this, from the Spain, from Spain, it's four euros. So it really depends on the country and everything. Um, yeah, and then after you, you click to buy, these numbers are going to be available here in your numbers. I have uh, different numbers that I use in different projects. Uh, and then all of these costs, they are billed uh, monthly. So if after you use your project and no longer want to pay them, you can always um, delete them, stop using, or I just keep mine here because I use them so often. So I actually need them there. Okay, so now we have a number. And after you purchase, this, purchase the number, you can copy the number that you're going to use and put it in the Vonage from number. And then, so you're going to, um, uh, let me just see if I'm doing this right, from and to, let me quickly go back to the code because I got confused now for using from Vonage to, one second. Uh, I'm actually using two numbers, so Vonage to number. Uh, so the from number, So I don't get confused. Hang on, I always get confused with the from too. So th there is the number that people are going to use from the UI. So the people are going to add their phone number here, that, which is going to receive the message. And then there is the number that we are sending the message from. Okay, so that's clear now. So people add here and we add ours here. So this is how it should look like. Um, Oh, sorry, I thought someone asked the question. Okay, so then you have everything added in here in your .env, not the .env .example. I'm just showing you .env .example so you don't see my keys. My actual keys are on the .env file. Okay, so I have everything set up in there. Let's go to the following part of our workshop. Uh, and just so you know these... Vonage from number should not, exactly, the Vonage from number should not be on the .env file. Um, I just put this one here because when I was testing, so let me remove this to um, remove the, uh, the questions and doubts that we're having. Okay, so what I was about to say is that the API that we're going to use for this workshop is the Vonage Messages API. So it is an API that provides you with access to SMS, MMS, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Viber. So uh, there are projects that you can create that using the API, the changes are very um, small from how you're going to use. So if I quickly show you before we get to the code, SMS. I'm on the okay. So you can see here that I'm uh, sending the SMS messages, and the type is SMS. But then, if I wanted to use a different type of messaging, I would just change the type here. I don't have to uh, have many lines of code. I just use the Vonage channel dot send method, and then I can send messages, or um, I can send messages to different social chat apps. So this is the one that we're going to use, but we also have uh, an API called the SMS API. So I have two examples in here that you can see how we use both of them. If you were to send a message with the SMS API, it would look something like vonage.message.send SMS with the number from, to, and the text in the message. But I'm not going to focus on the server SMS messages API. Sorry, the SMS uh, API, just the messages API today. 
And this is how uh, the messages API that we're not using for this workshop today, but just so you know, uh, we have this messages API that you can have sandbox. So if you have a project using uh, WhatsApp, Viber, or Facebook Messenger, you can integrate it with your own testing accounts, and then you can send messages to yourself, interacting with a, a web hook and everything to um, test messages. You can add the numbers which can receive messages from a list and everything else. So this is how our messages API look like. And now let's get to the application logic. Are you following? Are you with me? Do you have your .m file? Yes, okay, I got the yes here from the, from the chat. Okay, so we're going to have a file called server.js. Mine is called server messages API, because as I said, I have two examples, but your, yours can be server.js or any file that you would like. The only thing that we'll have to do in the end that I'll show you is that on your package.json file, you're going to say that once we run at npm start, it should run node from the folder. I put mine in a uh, script folder slash server messages api.js. So it really doesn't matter how you call your file as long as you're running the project with the uh, right file. So we saw that for the static files, I'm putting them in a public folder. For the script file, I'm putting them in a script folder. But again, this is just how I did my project. If you're using doing your project in a different way, that's really up to you. So. Without further ado, let's continue. So we create the server.js file uh, that tells Express how to, handle the how to handle the requests by the UI. So let me show you step by step how we're going to build it. And you can find the code on GitHub at any time. So our web app will use Express and it will read the files. Let me see if I have the, the here. Uh, here it's going to read the files from the the static files from the folder public let me go step by step here seeing what we're doing so the very first part we require dot env that this one I already explained we also require express we say the port that this is going to run in my case it's 3000 we also have the uh, the firebase admin tools that we're going to use uh, we're also using the vonage server sdk and right now, let me just finish saying uh, the server SDK. Then we also have the UUID. I'm using V4 and the service account that I'll show you in a bit how we get that. That's from Firebase. Um, so if you did, if you're following doing everything step by step with me, once you run, you installed everything, you should find these dependencies here on the package.json file, but then you also have to uh, initialize them from the server file that we're going to use. So, okay, that's what we have for now. So we added all of those to, to we imported these dependencies to the file. And now we're going to do this part here that I said I was going to come back in a bit. We're going to add the service account. I saw some people in the chat here said it's the very first time they're using Firebase, so I'll take some time to explain. So a Firebase account can be used to authenticate Firebase features. For our project, we're going to use the Firebase admin, this, is this one that you can see here, to access the database URL. So let's go back to our project here we are let me go to the main part so we have uh, the project here and then from the firebase uh, console we're going to click on the gear and then we go to uh, proof i think project settings let me see if i'm right yes so let me just repeat we click on the gear project settings and then there is a tab called service accounts Uh, and then if it's the very first time you're creating, yeah, this is my new project. So that's fine. I, I haven't done this before. So we click to generate a new private key here. And once I click it, it's going to download a file to your computer. 
And then we are going to add that file to your uh, project. And this is how it should look like. I have an example here. So you should have the, the information from your Firebase project, having the type of project ID, uh, client email, um, and other things. So these are going to be used for us to be able to interact with the Firebase admin tools to use our Firebase. So what I did is I, I downloaded that file and I copied the containing of that and I put it in a, in a file called service account key.json. And then I just say require this file name. But if you would like to use then this name here that is generated with that, that's fine too. You just make sure that you change how the file is being how the file is being imported. After that, we're going to initialize Firebase. No one is asking questions. So we use initial, initialize app to create and initialize Firebase app instances that will use the My Appointments Firebase database instance that we created. And then we remember that we imported the file. So we created, populated it, and then we imported it to our Firebase uh, real-time database. Um, and then it should look like something like this. We add the credential, admin.credential.cert uh, from the service account. That is this variable here that is getting all the information from that file. Uh, and we also have the Firebase URL that we, ah, we didn't add that. So in our .env file, there was a .env .example. The first one was Firebase database URL. If you are still in your console, you can see here, add me initialize app. And this is the Firebase database URL. So you would copy it and add it here. So this would read it from there. Uh, I don't know if you have seen this before, but uh, in, um, in JavaScript, when you're reading from the .env file, you use uh, process.env dot the uh, environment variable naming uppercase. So if you wanted to just get that variable and write directly here, that's fine too. But then you would just have to clean your project up before you upload it to be used in collaboration with other people. And then we're going to create this ref. No questions, okay. And then we're going to use this ref that is using the database reference with the name My Appointments. Let me get back here. So we have a real-time database and we called it My Appointments. So we're getting the information from here. So if you gave your, um, your database a different name, give the name that you wrote here. Mine is called My Appointments. So it's reading from My Appointments. And this is the part where we send SMS with the Vonage API. So we start, we create the instance of the Vonage client class. We initialize it with the Vonage API key and secret that we have in our .env file. And then we add this uh, snippet of code um, to, the, to our server.js file. And after that, I also have here uh, what I said in the beginning, how uh, we're going to interact this app with Express that we're saying that the apps are being read from uh, public. And we also choose to use express.json and express URL encoded extended true. Okay, so if we go back to our, here, you can see the date. We can see the format here of the date. You can see that we have, Ear, 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 hyphen, uh, month, month, ha, ha, uh, dash, day, day. There is a T uh, and then HH for hour, colon, and MM for minutes. So we were going to write a function to separate the date by the hour, and we're splitting it on the T here. And then, so the first part is for the date and the second part for the hour. And this is the function that I created to, um, 
to uh, get the date and the time that is going to be read from the database. So we're going to pass the slot and return the slot dot split on the letter T. Okay, so after that, okay, no questions. Yeah, let me just, uh, now we're going to create the appointment end point and inside of it, we're going to check the slot availability. So in here I have the app. Let me just close here for it to be easier for us to read. So the first post one that we're going to create uh, is the, sorry, is uh, the first endpoint that we're going to create to handle the post request for creating an appointment. Uh, and basically this endpoint will check if this slot is available. It will add the slot to the Firebase database. And then finally, it's going to send an SMS for confirmation to the user's phones, to the user's phone using the Vonage Messages API. So in here, I'm getting the, uh, we're doing an async, passing the request and response. We create the variable phone number. Let me put this side by side. We create here, okay? So we create the phone number that's getting the information that was written in here. Uh, we also get the slot with the slot date, which is the information written in here. And uh, we're going to get these variables date and time and pass it to the get date time slot. Sorry, we're getting date and time by using this um, function here that we created to get the date and the time. And we're going to use these two variables in our check if available function. Let's get to the check if available function. Let me do this here so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so uh, this function validates if a slot is available by checking if the slot already exists in the database. We are querying by using ref.orderbychild date once the value. So if you're ever um, interested to see, let me see if I have a page open here. If you're no, I closed it. So if you're ever interested to see, this is the, um, how can I say, it's the syntax of the Firebase real-time database. I don't know if anyone, let me know in the chat, if you use Firebase Firestore, which is a different Firebase, uh, the syntax is, is different also because the functionalities that you have um, in different databases are different. But this is how uh, we would do. So we are ordering it by the date. And then once we find the value, we're going to do something. Sometimes you want to do it with all the values found, but we want, once we found the date, get that value. Um, then, so uh, queries are allowed to order one key at a time. We have previ previously defined uh, our index. Do you remember when we did the Firebase rules? Uh, and then we said index on date for better performance. And we make sure that we're using dot once value to listen for exactly one event of the value. And after that, it stops listening. So this is the code on how it looks like we're going to do. So we say that for each one of them, we're going to look uh, for the data value. And if that slot already exists, uh, we can we cannot schedule an appointment if that slot already exists. Uh, if it's available, we're going to return that it's available. If not, they're going to receive um, a message saying that it's not possible from the UI, it's not possible for that to happen. And then we have to add the appointment to the database. So we create the function add to database that adds the slot and the code to Firebase, uh, to the Firebase database. This code is required to cancel the appointment. So we're going to use the code from the UUI, UUID uh, dependency. And as our friend uh, Manway wrote in the chat, there is even uh, fancier ways of using um, um, UUID doesn't necessarily has to be 
this dependency. So there's very various ways that you can use this. Uh, but for this one, we're then going to go um, in the reference of our database child and set slot and code. So basically, we're creating this slot and saying this is the slot with this date and with this user ID code, and it returns the code as well for it to be um, for it to be canceled. That's how it looks like. And then we also have the send an SMS with the appointment information to the user. Let's get to that. Maybe I have to make this one a bit smaller because the code is a bit bigger. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So let's send an SMS with the appointment information. So finally, once the slot is reserved, an SMS confirmation is sent back to the user uh, with the message. This is the message that I said. Uh, meeting booked at time on date and then the variables. Please save this code in case you would like to cancel your appointment. And then in here, we're going to pass a promise saying that we're using the vonage.channel.send method. And we're going to send a message to the number that was added in our, um, where is it? F. So vonage to number that was added here. Uh, and then in some countries, you can add like, you know, when you receive an SMS and it says, this message is from, depending on the country where you're in. And that's also, now I remember uh, when someone in the chat said, uh, uh, Vonage from number should not be in the .env file. The reason that I, I put it here is because some countries don't allow you to just say, oh, this message is from Vonage or my name or that name. You actually have to, um, go through the process within the Vonage uh, dashboard to say that this number belongs to this person or to these um, um, business that has this name. Uh, because I purchased the phone number that is from a country that I can do it, I could just say this message is from Vonage. But if the country where you're from would not accept it, you then would have to use the, the phone number from here and using the proper way process, uh, process.env like this. So it's reading from there. In my case, I can just say that it's from Vonage or I can say like CDJS demonstration. Let me just put my name, I'm on the demonstration. I guess less characters. And then the content of this message is text containing the text that comes from this variable text. And in case there are any problems with the message, we're going to say, uh, we're going to have a console logging saying that there was an error or if everything was okay, the message was, sending, was sent successfully. I added those first uh, when we're testing our application here so we can see everything. And let's finalize the business logic for the first part. So the, the piece of code below here is responsible to call the previously created helper functions. So if this, uh, I'll, I'll just get back to the question that you're seeing there. Let me just finish what I'm saying here. So the piece of code below is responsible to call the previously created helper functions. If the slot is available, the user will have their slot added to the database and have the SMS sent back to them. Otherwise, they will be requested to choose a different time slot. Uh, and this is what we're doing here. If everything is okay, it's booked. If not, they, you receive a message that I told you that you receive in the UI. Sorry, you need to choose a different slot. This is already busy. So this is everything to uh, book the appointment, not to cancel it. Let me go to the question in the chat. Vonage from number, Vonage from number, Vonage. Uh, did it get confusing? Let me get back to here. So uh, if I am using um, a phone number, that is from a country that doesn't have these restrictions in place that say you cannot use this, you have to use an actual phone number when you're sending the message, when you receive the message on your phone and you see there, this message was sent by name of the place. 
uh, some countries don't accept that you write the name of the place. So if it accepts, I could just write any string in here. If it's from, um, if the dot m variable exists, if not use vonage. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. So you say you don't have to write anything in here. If you already have that variable, you can just from the, about the so you can just say, write it in here. Uh, instead of writing it um, like hard code, that makes sense. Uh, I'm just going to leave it for now with Vonage because um, my actual .m file is not being shown here. Otherwise, I can't show it in in uh, at the end. But yes, you're right. We can just add uh, it here and not have any hard code in here. That's a very good point, point my way. Thank you. Uh, and then finally, for us to finish, we can create the cancel appointment. So we create this endpoint to handle the post request for canceling an appointment from the database by using a code provided by the user that they received when they scheduled their appointment. So uh, we say remove from the database and then we use this. Again, we're using the, um, the syntax uh, of Firebase database, uh, real-time database. Um, and then we say uh, remove that reference of child appointment from the database. And then we call this function. And we also send a response saying this log has been removed. And to finalize, um, so this was canceled the appointment. And to finalize, we have listen to the port. And it's saying to the application, to our express application, to listen on the port that we said here in the beginning, my case is 3000. So this is the codes that we have. And to test it out, we go on our package.json. There's a package.json file. Um, and then we can add, um, when you created, you probably didn't have anything in your scripts. So I created a start script in here. And then I added that we're going to run the file from the server messages API file that in your case should be just messenger, sorry, it should be just server.js. So it should look like something like this. And to test it out, we first install of the dependencies. So we do npm install. Let me open my terminal. We do uh, npm install. So that installs all the dependencies that we have added before. And after that, we do an npm start. And okay, clear, an npm start. With that, we see that it's running on port 3000. And if I run here, uh, it's going to work. Um, and then uh, if we make any changes in here, you would see it. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to put this on a different screen so you can see it so I can put my phone number uh, and I'm going to leave this in here. I don't think it's going to run for the first time because I didn't actually add the deploy functions from Firebase. So let me see if this is going to work. Um, so I'm adding my phone number that I have here in my hand. Um, and then I'm adding a slot. Let me just update the page because we changed because before it was in October and now I can only book appointments in May. And it's saying, I think I did something wrong in my, um, in my code because it's saying that I can just book for May, 2021. So let's go back to the code and see what I did wrong. That's not accepting my year. Did I put the year incorrect? Did anyone pay attention? Where's my uh, public HTML? Let me see if I put the date incorrect. Yeah, can you see I put maximum date 2021. So <laughs> it, it told me my UI that I cannot uh, book an appointment. So I, I restarted. Okay, now I can see 2022. Let me put an appointment here for the 6th of May, uh, 10.30 a.m. 
Uh, and then I'm going to, let me go back to that screen. Okay, this is my um, the real time database. I'm going to put my phone number and book slot. Um, I had a problem, it, it went to slash appointment, but nothing happened. So what I want to do here is because I didn't do the Firebase start, I see there was a problem here that we can see. It's saying, cannot read properties of undefined. Maybe because you generate a new service account. Yeah, I did many things in here because I created two projects at the same time. But while I'm trying to fix my problem here, uh, definitely try running your project and let me know if yours work. Um, let me see. Uh, let me just do Firebase login. I'm already logged in and then I'm going to do um, this is cool about workshops that you can see errors happening in real time and people fixing it. I like it. A little bit added pressure, but <laughs> um, let me see. What was the command that I said to start? Does anyone remember? It's Firebase. Firebase in it, Firebase in it, I think, Firebase in it. Then I said, yeah, thank you, Molly. So I said, it's a real-time database and we're also using functions. You can also see the folders here for functions created, okay. Yes. Even though my Firebase console rules, I think it, I set it on 2021. That's something I'm going to have a look right now as well. Firebase, scheduler, rules, and just make sure that I add that there. Ah, I left it for 2021. Maybe that's why it's not accepting, but let's see. And then I do JavaScript. Yes. Do you want to stop dependencies with NPM? Not yet. Oops, I put yes, no. Okay, I have my functions folder that's here. Okay, then I do a Firebase deploy to deploy everything that I've done. Oh, did I put to put lint? I don't want lint right now. Hang on, Firebase init, real-time functions. Okay. JavaScript, I don't want to use lint, overwrite it. Did it overwrite it because I did it wrong, yes. Do you want to install dependencies? Yes. Okay, now it's installing because I, I wrote to you instead of why. Um, anyway, let me know if the ones who are following there, they managed to do it. Okay, everything is clear, five days before. Missing script link. Running npm prefix report. Hmm. Functions play deploy. But I didn't choose to use lint. Why is this giving me headache? Running command is missing scripts link. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm just checking how to fix that error because I haven't run into this before. Um, let me install npm lint because even though I didn't choose it, maybe needs it. Uh, also the Firebase file, I have a firebase.json file, I believe then maybe it's running a pre-deploy here, functions pre-deploy. Oh, I have a pre-deploy here. Can you see I have a pre-deploy to run Lint and I don't have this Lint installed. Because I installed it, I'll just see if it runs now. If not, I'll, I'll remove that. Yeah, it didn't work. So let me remove these 
brown lint. How did I do that? Yeah. Oh, what's my error now? Permit terminate with non existing code. Can I just remove this pre deploy? Bear with me. I don't know if I have to remove the code of the, or the entire pre deploy. Okay, it seems like it's going through now. And it's saying that my uh, this project, it seems that I didn't choose the correct uh, usage and billing. Oh, I mean the no cost. Remember that we should be in the um, pay as you go. I mean the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, now I'm being per so I purged this it. That's the thing I showed you two different projects and then I got confused. Okay, so I'm in the right one right now. Let me try running a Firebase deploy again. So it deploys everything that we've done here. I think you can delete all pre-deploy. Yeah, so according to one way, I could delete the entire thing here, but because it's working, I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, everything's being deployed now. Okay, so let me try again. <laughs> let me see if I got everything right. Uh, we go back to real-time database. Uh, then I have my information here. I have the slots zero, one, and new activity. I also need to run my project again. So uh, npm start. Uh, I refresh the page. So let me put again, uh, 6 of May, uh, midday, 30 p.m. P.m. is midday, right? <laughs> I was getting confused. My phone number, uh, let me put here. Do you think it's going to work now, people? Uh, it's not going through. I'm going, I'm getting local host slash appointment. Let me see the, inspecting the page to see the problem. Hmm. Not going through. Weird. Hmm. When I click to book slot, it's not going through. Let me see what I'm doing wrong here in the code. Did I put it right? It's post slash appointment. Yes, that's right. Cannot read properties on the fine reading send. Line 70. Yeah, uh, it's from this page here. So it's saying that there is a problem with my, this variable in here, the method from Vonage. Um, I'm just thinking that maybe we change the usage of this. So just for me to see if that's a problem with this API or if it's my code, I'll just quickly try to use the, where's my package JSON? I'll just try to get this to run from the, what's the name of the file? server SMS API. Uh, server. Otherwise, I'm going to have to update that code in there. I also don't know if this code here is up to date, but let's see if we can start. Okay. Um, booking on, ah, uh, then we, no, the HTML is fine. We changed the date. So this one will be just a script. Uh, booking it for the 6th of May, 11.30 a.m. My phone number, book slot. Okay, uh, it seems that it went through. I got the message. This lot is available, booking for you now. Uh, and then you can see here that I have uh, the date and the user ID that has uh, all these numbers here. Okay, that's very good. Okay, so there, there was a problem with um, the method that I'm using because the code is working here when I use my other API. So 
I'd have to look here right now. We still have time in this workshop. Yes, I still have time um, on why uh, this method here is not working, the advantage.channel.send. In the meantime, while I'm trying to uh, fix my error, local host, let me know where you got through. Did you get to where I am? Do you have the same errors or were you kind of like just following and not doing everything by yourself? Uh, and also let me show you here on the phone what I got. So I have here on my phone uh, that I received a message from the phone number that I purchased with the message. I just received it one minute ago. And then it has a code here that for me to remove it, it could also be used. Um, and just so you see the code for the SMS API, I'm not doing it by myself, okay. Uh, so just so you see, it's the, the API is slightly different. You will use uh, vonage.message.sendSMS and it's slightly different. Uh, but there was a problem here with my, the way that I use these, this code. So I'm going to try and fix this right now, but maybe if I could show you just as removing, and I'm not sure if it's going to work because I, it's a different code. So let me see if I put remove slot. Uh, so the slots here, let me have this side by side. If I put this here, if this one is going to work, or if I did a different logic on that one. So I'm uh, so this is the code here, right? So if I click to remove slot, you can see that this is being removed. You can see that it's no longer there. It's being removed. So yeah, it works as well. It, it was just a problem with um, something that's uh, not updated with my um, API. So if you would like to do, it's the same code, but just this part here that we used Vonage channel .send, we would use the part here from Vonage.message.send SMS, and they're using the SMS API instead of the messages API. So while I'm going to try and fix this error here right now with you, you I'm here, you can ask me any questions about, um, I don't know, Firebase or anything. I know there are some people from Brazil, if you'd like to ask anything about what it's like living abroad or I don't know, anything you would like to know, I'll be here trying to fix my error and I'm here for a chat. If you're free to talk to me on the chat or to have your camera on and to talk to me. And I'm aware I haven't used at times like the most um, like robust or best code that I would use because I want this code to be um, inclusive for most people who are getting started in their career with codes that were uh, was easy to read and everything. So feel free to come on the camera and mic or in the chat to chat, chat with me. Um, we're getting some good comments from um, some of the people. Um, they liked a lot of your clean, uh, nice code. You explained oh, thank it you. very well. That's very good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm glad you managed to follow along. There's some people here saying, cool, thank you. Yeah, so uh, what I'll do is I'll fix this error and I will uh, update the code on the GitHub repo on the next days. I won't promise for today because it's Friday <laughs> and we know we don't push code on a Friday. So, but I'll fix this as soon as possible for the people who would like to play with this uh, in the following days. And I hope this was um, a good way for you to see how powerful things are for you. You know, uh, you start with the simplest thing you get and then you can add on top of that. Um, so if you would like to hear more about Vonage and everything that we do, I share with you some web, web pages here. We are on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, uh, we're everywhere. You can also email us. We're on uh, Twitter everywhere. Uh, and just once more, let me share the code with people, not only for this workshop, but if you would like to use our APIs to try for different projects and everything, uh, here's the code. I'll just say it once more before we go. So the code is 22SULHZB. 
And thank you so much, CDJS Brazil and everyone for having me here today. And we have a message. This recorded meeting will be available somewhere else. I'll leave you to answer that we, question. We will, uh, we, will, uh, we will have this uh, on our YouTube channel. So uh, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have also another um, another workshop that uh, Bonnet's uh, devs gave uh, Dwayne. Um, ah, Dwayne is excellent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, also this this workshop, we're going to repeat it again in the Singapore version of CityJS. Yes. In about, um, I think it's on June. But um, June, yes. Follow up at the website for more details. And yeah, just follow up, subscribe, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. We have uh, about uh, 60 videos from um, the last three conferences. And tomorrow we're going to be broadcasting uh, the conference for free for everyone to watch it. Thank you, everyone. Obrigado. And um, yeah, I know you're going to say obrigado because women say. Um, yeah, see, sí. you already yes. know so much Portuguese. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And thank you, everyone. And uh, have a good uh, rest of the day in Brazil. And uh, for uh, London, have a good night. And uh, we're going to be back uh, soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.